Hello, welcome to Paint a Beautiful Picture. My name is Violet Newby, and I'm so excited to have you with me today. As you know, we are working on establishing principles in our children's lives, sharing deep affection with them, parenting them with intention, nurturing them, helping them to grow and develop, and teaching and training them. Today, we are going to talk about teaching and training. I've had so many people say to me, my kid is out of control. I don't know what to do with them. I tell them to come and they run the other direction. I take them into a store like Walmart and pretty soon they're way down the aisle and they're not responding at all to what I say. Yes, I understand. <laughs> and oh yes, I have seen it many times. And so let's talk about how to approach this. First of all, as I shared with you the other day, a lot of the way that I trained my sons was based upon scripture from the word of God. Since he is the author of life, he probably knows the best way to manage it. Let me tell you what he says to us in Proverbs 22, 6. Start children off on the way they should go. And when they are old, they will not turn from it. In other words, if you put them on a good path as a child, so they might take a few trips out into the woods overall, they're going to come back to that path, especially when that path makes sense and that path gives them safety and security. That path is a place of love and careful direction. Yes, they're going to love that path. They're not going to have any trouble with it. So how do you get your child on that path? First of all, you train them to listen to your voice. As their mom, as their dad, your voice is the voice of authority as well as the voice of love. If you want them to someday recognize and respond to the love and authority of God in their life, they've got to learn how to respond to the love and authority in your life. So if they're getting ready to run somewhere and you say, stop, you have to train them to stop when you say. Now, let me tell you something. Training is active. If you don't believe me, I would like you to watch a couple of videos about drill sergeants teaching recruits what they have to do in order to be a soldier. That drill sergeant is in better shape than they are, knows the regs better than they do, and is prepared to work harder than any grunt in his platoon because he has to be. As a parent, you have to be absolutely dedicated to hard work and consistency, because it's going to take that, and recognize that probably the first five years of your child's life is going to take everything you have in you so that they will be established on a firm pathway that goes where you want them to go. Let's describe what that looks like. If you say to your child, stop, and they run away from you, you need to go where they are. You don't scream. You don't get angry. You don't get frustrated. You go where they are. You take them gently by the hand. Now, if they're going to fight with you and flail and scream, you give them a little firmer grip, but you take them gently by the hand and say, I said, stop. Then you need to take them back to where you were when you said that word. Because they've got to understand at this point, I was supposed to stop. Let me tell you as a parent, this takes a lot of time and a lot of energy, like all of your time and all of your energy. I would say the first two to three years, most of your life is going to be expended in training your child. When my sons were little, I had a one-year-old and a preemie. There was no way I was chasing this hyperactive one-year-old all over the place and caring for this preemie. So if we walked out the door, I'm talking even to take a walk down the street, much less to go to the grocery store or to Walmart, they had to hold on, my one-year-old especially, either to my shirt or my skirt and not let go. Now, he could go as far as my shirt or my skirt went. He had a little leeway, but that was as far as he got. And if he let go, I would say to him, where is your hand? And he knew that one. He would immediately grab back onto me. I always had my child within reach, and he, I was within his reach. He was always safe with me there. I had to train him to do that. I trained him to do that from the time he could walk. I trained him to do that inside of my house first. I would say, David, come with me. Hold on to my shirt or my skirt. 
if I could, I'd hold his hand. But as I said, often I had the baby and other things. He would, he was used to walking around with me in the house and he had a hold of me, he had contact with me. However you want to handle that. Now I have to admit, these little harnesses they put on kids, I said often enough, I think if they would have had those when my son was little, I definitely would have put one of those on him because the boy was really hyperactive. But I trained him to hang on to me. You need to train your child. You need to train your child to listen to your voice. When I said to them, son, I'm serious, they stood up. I told my kids, if my mouth is moving, so are you. I did not expect them when I said, go brush your teeth, go get dressed, go get ready for bed, go do the dishes, that we were going to have a long conversation or an argument or an hour go by. No, I trained my sons to move when I spoke. Let's go to Ephesians 6, 1 through 3. One of my favorite passages, and my sons can tell them to you very strongly. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, that it may be well with you, and you may live long upon the earth. This is a strong promise from God, okay? Colossians 3.20 also says that children should obey their parents. That means when you speak, they obey. It's just that easy. And it is your place to train them about that. It is not going to be their first or best response when they are little. Mom, I'm busy. Mom. Oh, and please notice, you're going to hear back what you say. If you're so busy on your phone, oh, just a few minutes, just a few minutes. I I'm almost, oh, guess what they're going to say to you when you say, I need you to. Yeah, just a few minutes. I'm busy in a minute. Oh, you're training them, not just by the way that you expect them to behave, but by the way that you're behaving. So if they say, Mom, I really need you, whoever's on that phone, they're probably going to be just fine. Put your phone down. Go take care of what your child needs. You're training them to be responsive by your responses. In fact, there's a really interesting scripture in Ephesians 6, 4, fathers, which could just as easily be parents, do not exasperate your children. Do you know when your child's waiting for you and you're busy with your girlfriend on the phone and you're busy talking to your guys on the phone and sometimes you really exasperate your child. They don't have very much patience. They are little. Don't exasperate them. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Let me tell you something really important. If you don't know the word, your child stands no chance of knowing it. Remember how we looked at Deuteronomy and it said that you talk about it when you rise up and you talk about it when you sit down and you talk about it when you go to bed and you talk about it when you come into your house and when you go out, you're always talking about it. The only way you can talk about it is if you know it. So I'm going to give you a very specific example, which I've shared with lots of kids, including my own, and also kids that I've taught in high school. Okay, so that passage in Ephesians 6 says that it may be well with you and you may live long upon the earth. This is what I ask them. I really want you to think about this one in relationship to your own children. I said to the guys, so, you know, when you grow up, it's your dream to marry some Worthless chicky who doesn't keep the house clean, who never cooks a meal for you, can't even throw a can of SpaghettiOs on the stove, doesn't look after your kids. She's always out in the street spending every penny of your money. Oh, and she disrespects you and talks bad about you all over town. That's like your ideal woman, right? And they're going, what? And I'll say to the girls, so you want to grow up and marry some guy who beats you when he feels like it? Sits his behind down on the couch, doesn't have a job, but he's like, oh, baby, where's my beer? Hurts your children, runs whenever he feels like it. That's like your ideal dude? Not really. Oh, that it may be well with you. You'd really like to grow up and marry someone decent, right? Someone you'll be proud of. And oh, you'd really like your children to grow up and marry someone decent. Someone you can feel good about. Well, this is part of what training is for, just so you know. And then the one I really love. Okay, 
And incidentally, I hate to say this to you, but last year this happened. A good friend of mine had her grandson living with her, and she said, I really don't think you need to go out tonight. And he said, I'm going. I don't really care what you say. He's 19 years old. Got in his car, picked up his girlfriend. 23 minutes later, they were both dead. So lest you think that the analogy I'm about to give you doesn't happen, oh, it most assuredly does. And it is tragic. It says, so that your life may be long upon the earth. And I will say to kids, so you want to go out and get in a car wreck and die when you're 19? Never knowing that was actually going to happen to my friend's grandson. A former student of mine was 20. He was out driving with his girlfriend and got hit on, head on by a drunk driver. And he died instantly, but his girlfriend did survive. It does happen, you know. And God said, obey your parents that it may be well with you and you may live long upon the earth. You know, God has a way of keeping his promises, and we should train our children that there are both good and bad consequences to the decisions that we make. So you say, okay, well, my kid is a little kid, and I haven't trained him, and what in the world am I supposed to do about that? Here's what I encourage you. Start today. Start at the place that needs the most work. Commit to doing the work yourself. Commit to having your child do the work. So I'll give you a great example. If a child comes home and they're not used to doing their homework right away, they put it off till 8.30. I should tell you that I have a few parents who come to me about their kids that are like that. And they'll say, what should I do? And I'll say, well, if homework is a priority, and I think it is, you give them maybe half an hour to an hour when they get home, because after all, they've been sitting in school all day. They're kind of over it. Give them a really nice snack, play a game with them, let them go outside, but make sure that in your training, they understand you're going to come back in. Our school got out at 10 to 3, so the hour was 4. You're going to come back in at 4, and you're going to do your homework. It's a high motivator, too, because they want to get back outside with their friends, or they want to get back to that video game, or they want to get to something. You say, the sooner your homework is done, the sooner you get to go do what you want to do. Boy, you'd be surprised how quickly some of those kids can get their homework done. It's amazing. And you need to sit down with them at various points while they're doing their homework and see how they're doing. Or if they say, Mom or Dad, I'm really having a terrible time, you need to sit with them. You need to train yourself to respond to your child's needs so that they have the safety and security of knowing that you're going to answer them and they are going to answer you. Okay, so I told you that every day I'm going to give you a challenge. Today, I want to challenge you. Where do you need to train your child the most urgently? Where is your child giving you the most challenge? Or where are you struggling the most as a parent? And then write that in your notebook and talk about, or even send me an email or a comment down below about what do I need to do in order to train my child so that they can stop, effectively listen to me, and obey me. It really is possible, and I want to promise you that it has great dividends, both for you and for your child's life. Today I'm going to pray for you because it is a big task, training a child. There's no question about that. Lord God, you are a good father. And you desire that we obey you. And I think that most of us as parents desire that our children obey us. So I pray that you be with every single soul who is listening today. That you would give them wisdom and insight and even courage about what they need to do in their child's life. To train them up so that they will have a good and a long life. Thank you for your promises, and thank you for the opportunity to share today. In Jesus' name, amen. My friend, I pray that you have a great, satisfying, <laughs> and joyful experience in parenting your children today. Thank you for joining me.
You may find additional information on our paintabeautifulpicture.com website. Additionally, you may watch me on Rumble, and you may also listen to a podcast on Buzzsprout or Spreaker, all under the name Paint a Beautiful Picture. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. You may subscribe, and if you are interested in receiving notifications, please hit the notifications button.